David prepared the way for his son Solomon. And if you look at that time in Israel's history, it was the pinnacle of Israel's history was when Solomon became king because David laid the foundation for the next generation. We have neg negative examples, of course, Hezekiah, when he was in that time where he had been actually restored and uh, was showing off all of the uh, things in the temple to the Babylonian uh, Babylonian uh, kings who came and a prophet came to him and said, well, hey, do you realize that these people are going to come and take over your nation? And, and then once he heard that it wasn't in his generation, he's like, oh, <laughs> I'm off the hook. <clears throat> he didn't think generationally, but David did. David thought generationally. Generationally, Notice that he was known as a man after God's own heart. And he fulfilled the purpose, fulfilled his purpose, the word says, in his own generation. <clears throat> and I think of my dad, and I think, you know, he really did fulfill his purpose in his generation. But then I thought more about, okay, well, where do we take it from here? Where do we take it from here? One of the things that is a blessing of our family, many of you in this room know the times <clears throat> that we would spend at, at Grandma Hansen's farm in the summer. And one of my great memories of Grandma Hansen was when I would get up in the morning, where would she be? She'd be at that dining room table, reading the scriptures, praying. She would be talking to us about that, about, about living a godly life, all these different things. And that is, is so deeply ingrained in our family. The whole concept of holiness. The whole concept of living a life that is set apart unto God. And I'm so thankful for that heritage. Now being a pastor myself and, and dealing with lots of different people's issues and problems. I know and understand on a personal level how so many people do not have what we have. There's a lot of people that do not have what we have. So the question then becomes, well, what do we do with the legacy that we've been given? What do we do with that? One of the best compliments my dad paid me in the final weeks, I mean, he told me this earlier, but he told, told it to me again a few weeks back, because I, when I found out that he was ill in December, <clears throat> I started to make it a point to try to call him every day because I just wanted to stay in touch with where he was at and I, I knew, I didn't know how much longer I would have him, but I wanted to make sure the time that we had was, was well spent. And one of the best compliments he paid me during that time was he said, you know Brent, <clears throat> since you had that went through that whole Toronto thing a few years ago, you just seem a whole lot happier. And I was like, uh, and for those who don't know, we, we had an experience in our own lives in ministry about uh, over five years ago that just really transformed us, changed us, and brought us into what we like to call the fullness of the Father's love. And it led to many, many different things. And for, for me, the Holy Spirit really came to me with the presence of his joy and uh, to the point where, I mean, a laughter just filled me and I was very desperately needed in my life in ministry at that point. But it was a great compliment that he paid to me because I, I realized, that, you know what, it, it must be showing if your own dad tells you that. <laughs> it must be showing you really are joyful and, and all these different things. And one of my, one of the passions of my heart and my life, and this I guess would be an exhortation to us as a family was that he would come into that fullness himself. Because if there is one thing in our family, and I can speak to this because I have almost 50 years of experience with this family now, that is, has been a struggle for some, is the whole concept of really feeling of self-criticism, of feeling like we never quite measure up. We never quite meet the mark. And I know some of my own dad's personal struggles with that, even towards the end. I'm so thankful for the life of holiness and being set apart. I'm not saying to forsake that at all. But what I am challenging us to do is to live in the fullness and the 
destiny and a purpose that the Father has for us, even as a family, to take us even higher. Yes, to maintain that standard of holiness, but also to realize what our identity in Christ and our destiny really is. That we are sons and daughters of the King, and that He wants us to live with that destiny and purpose, and not only impact this family, but impact this world. Because the promise of Scripture is the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ. And so the challenge that we have is not to just wait for uh, Jesus to come back and say, oh, the world's going to hell and we might as well just forget about it. But to actually make a difference and an impact while we are here. Because I truly believe that the Father wants His body to grow into the fullness of the head, which is Jesus Christ. He wants us to become the re representation of Christ on the earth. And so that, yes, involves living a life that's set apart. But even more, it involves making an impact in whatever realm of influence the Father has placed us. That could be in the church, that could be in the education realm, that could be in the media realm, that could be in, in many different realms. But we are called to be that representation of Christ on the earth all the way until the end, like my father was. And as I look back over the, these hundred years of just starting with Edward and Esther Hansen, now looking a hundred years later in what this family, where it has come from, from where it started, I think of how much even greater impact now can we have, not only on this generation, but on future generations, when we realize who we are in Christ and we begin to live out that identity and that calling and that purpose that he has for us. I've been so inspired by the ministry of uh, Bill Johnson. We're part of their uh, network of churches in, in Reading, Bethel. And, I, and he wrote a book called uh, Dreaming with God. And, and I have to embarrass Matthew a little bit because his, his story of the bow was in that book. And I read, the, I read it and I called him, did you know your story is actually in this book? They said, yeah, I know it's there. But I thought, what an awesome inspiration for us as a family that the Father wants to use us, and even as my mom mentioned about my dad, is, you know, he'd pray about an idea, ask the Holy Spirit to give him direction on how to solve this particular problem. Then he would get a download from heaven, and then the next day he would know where to go with it. We are a family, and this is where my challenge is to call us higher. We are a family who has been given an awesome inheritance now I believe God wants us to take it higher. He wants us to take it even higher. To have impact, to have influence wherever we live. And it's not just the church, it's all realms of culture and society. Because Jesus is coming back for a church that is in, I believe, it's, the word says, it's a, it's a it's a bride without spot or wrinkle. So it's, it's really a victorious church that he's coming back for. And we stand in a perfect place as a family to have that kind of influence in our culture. I mean, just by the lives that we live, the people we encounter in everyday life, we have the opportunity to be salt and light where we are at. So I want to challenge us just in, in that particular realm because I really felt God speaking to me about sharing that with us as a family and I believe would honor my father's legacy and what he left and the foundation that he laid and the legacy that we can carry on and take to an even higher level. There's a video of uh, just some preaching uh, highlights that um, my brother Wayne put together.